to the 23rd annual Oakwood Cemetery Walk. The Walk Keegan Park. Yay! 100 years old. Wow. That's what we're celebrating it. today. Okay. So we hope you enjoy the tour through the cemetery. On behalf of the Waukegan Park District, the Waukegan Historical Society, and the City of Waukegan, we thank you for coming. We hope you enjoy today's cemetery walk, and we really hope you enjoy the stories about our beautiful and historic parks. Are you ready? Yes! Yeah. 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 Margaret is our first docent. Everybody standing, please go ahead and go with Margaret. We're so fortunate to have a very nice day. Have a seat. I would like to introduce you to Mrs. Marceline Powell. Good afternoon and welcome to Oakwood Cemetery. This is one of the most popular destinations in Waukegan. It was actually designed to become a gathering space for people in our city. In fine weather, uh, families come from all over the city. They bring their picnic lunches, they watch their children play in the grass, they visit with their neighbors, and they tend the graves of their departed loved ones. There are many such locations in Waukegan, but this one is actually my very favorite. Some of my family members are buried here. Oh, excuse me. I, I neglected to introduce myself, didn't I? Um, I'm Marceline Powell. I was born in Canada in 1842 and came to this country at the age of 10 with my family. When I was 15, I married Mr. Powell. And two years later, we started our family. Over the course of 22 years, we welcomed 10 children, five girls, and five boys into our family. I'm so blessed to be able to say that most of them have survived until at least early adulthood. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, my little Marceline, who's buried here, was born in 1877, and she lived for only four years. She's just sadly missed. The rest of our nine children survived longer than that. Well, my husband is quite a successful businessman. He owns the largest pump manufacturing plant in the state of Illinois. His factory here in Waukegan has employed up to 100 people. He also served as alderman in the 1870s and 1880s and was the mayor of Waukegan for three years. I must tell you that I really enjoyed being the first lady of such an important city, the county seat of Lake County. Well, John is still well known for ridding our city streets of barnyard animals during his tenure as mayor. Can you imagine <laughs> that women and children had to walk through all that disgusting filth? Hard to believe. Well, John's always been a visionary, and for many years he's recognized that Waukegan has boomed with new industry and people coming in from all parts of the world. He and other men like him are progressive thinkers. And one of their cherished <coughs> ideas has been that open space like this would be set aside for people to escape from the crowded conditions and poor sanitation of our city and be able to enjoy some leisure space. So way back in 1874, my John and George Kirk, another local businessman, donated an acre and a half of land to the city to be used as its first park. Now sadly, no money was allocated to develop or maintain that space. So in 1891, John and I donated more land to the city. And we were so pleased when they decided to name that area Powell Park after oh. our family. My fondest desire would be that Powell Park would, be, would remain a lovely open space for people to enjoy for many years to come. Well, in 1895, legislation was passed that allowed municipalities like ours to establish park districts. And in just two years ago, in 1900, a referendum was held to establish one of those districts. Well, would you believe that 83% of the men who voted voted against establishing a park district? 
John and his friends were so very disappointed. It's been an uphill battle for them to uh, implement some of their progressive ideas in our city. Well, the 1800s have come and gone, and we're in the very early days of the 20th century. Can you believe that? And we have, although we don't have a park district, we have many other lovely gathering places here in our city. I'll tell you about just a couple of them, shall I? Lakefront Park, just over the bluff, is a very favorite place of people. Um, people love to bathe there, fish there, and especially enjoy the comings and goings of the large excursion boats that come into our harbor. Uh, we also have many ponds throughout Waukegan, and they provide year-round opportunities for people to fish, to swim, and to ice skate. Waukegan is well known for its mineral springs. These are natural gathering places, as everybody knows that the mineral waters promote good health. And the fairgrounds on Washington Street, why many baseball games are played there, as well as other events that, that are held, arts events and music events and just places for people to enjoy. But our very newest park is Electric Park. Now that has just been built a couple of years ago, the very far western edge of our city. And would you believe it has such an innovation, a, a baseball field surrounded by a fence. And then there are open spaces as well where people have the opportunity to have all kinds of events. Why, recently an outdoor movie was shown there and hundreds of people attended. And I do believe I've heard talk of a fireworks demonstration being planned in the near future. <laughs> Well, I hope you have an opportunity to visit some of these other lovely places. And I hope too that in the future, people will catch the vision of my John and other civic-minded people and will establish one of those new park districts because I believe that will preserve a lot of our open space for people in our city to enjoy. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Mrs. Powell. Powell Park was acquired by the Waukegan Park District in 1922. By 1943, there became two Powell Parks. Grand Avenue Park was renamed Powell Park in honor of John and Marceline's son, George Nelson Powell, uh, who became the chief of police from 1897 until 1901 and he also became the Lake County Sheriff from 1902 to 1906. The first Powell Park eventually became called different names including original Powell, Old Powell, Park Avenue Tot Lot, Old Powell Park was dedicated and renamed to Ray Bradbury to one of Waukegan's favorite sons, author Ray Bradbury, in 1990. Bradbury played in the park as a child and later paid tribute to it in his book, Dandelion Wine. And we will make our way towards the road again. Have a lovely visit today. Thank you. I would like to introduce you to Mrs. Marion Upton. Welcome to one of Waukegan's very first parks. My name is Marion Upton, and I've lived in Waukegan my entire life. Moved here as a little girl. I was born actually not far from here, over in McHenry County. At the age of 25, I married Edward Upton, a lawyer. Um, <laughs> together, we had a son, also Edward, also a lawyer. <laughs> Proud mom. Proud mom. <laughs> Um, I became involved in civic um, duties here in Waukegan early on, um, getting involved with the women's club here in Waukegan. I was on the committee for the park districts, um, helping to you know put plans in place for them. I was also a member of the women's club in downtown Chicago, which was really exciting because it was one of the largest women's organizations at the time. I worked on the committee for subscriptions um, to gather money together for the uh, Illinois Industrial School for Girls. We were able to get housing together for them, raising over $12,000. I was honored to be their president in 1908 and held that post for two years. 
1910. I'm also a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution. But enough about me. <laughs> I would like to let you know a little bit about how the Waukegan Parks came to be. So back in the 1890s, we recognized the need um, to designate some land for Waukegan. Industry was booming here, um, but they were taking up all of the lakefront and there wasn't any really beautiful space for our kids to play and we wanted to make sure that we preserve some of those beautiful pieces of land for our kids and for the future. So the women's organization, we put an organized plan in place. Um, we knew that we needed to create a formal park district association. This would allow us the ability to acquire land, raise money to acquire land, um, and receive gift and donations. So the women's club worked hard to file a petition for the organization of the Waukegan Park District. The proposition was presented several times. Unfortunately, each time it was voted down. Well, I wasn't going to let that stop progress. So in 1906, I reached out to the renowned Chicago architect, Dwight H. Perkins. I wanted him to formalize an extensive park plan for us. Um, he had been worked with Daniel Burnham and John Root on the planning and the coordination of the Columbian Exposition, the World's Fair, 1893. Beautiful. Uh, at the time I approached him, he was uh, the chief architect for the Board of Education, responsible for 40 of the Chicago public schools. His passion for the preservation of forests is what uh, influenced him to help put together the Cook County Forest Preserve System. So who better to help us with our parks? So the Perkins Plan, as we called it, outlined our extensive park system for us here in Waukegan. Uh, we wanted to use our natural ravines, we wanted to widen our boulevards, we really wanted to expand the lakefront and take some of that property back, build it up. It was a very extensive plan. All told, it was going to take about 60 years to bring it to its entire fruition. But that's okay. I wanted a solid plan in place so the minute we got the vote, we could move forward. Well, we finally got our chance in 1913. The women of Illinois received the right to vote. So we pushed to have a proposition put back on the ballot. And on December 26, 1916, the vote passed. Of the 459 votes cast for the Park District, over half of them were from women. Four to one margin. We were also able to push through another little item on that ballot, which was for our local prohibition. <laughs> so in April of 1917, I was able to turn over to the district, the Board of Commissioners, all eight of them, the comprehensive plan that Dwight Perkins had put in place for us. We were so excited to finally get the parks developed and all the planning that we put into action. So please, go out and enjoy the park today, and know that the women of Waukegan want you to be surrounded by beauty. Well, Marion Upton died in 1920. Two years later, Marion's children decided to deed the land at the end of North Genesee Street, where her parents had lived, to the Waukegan Park District. And instructions were given that if they ever, if the Waukegan Park District ever changed the name of Upton Park, it would revert back to the Upton family. There was a time where they tried to change the name, but it was written into the deed, and they could not. Mm -hmm. I would like to introduce you to Mr. Axel Lybeck. Thank you. Uh, pardon my surprise. Uh, this isn't a funeral, right? <laughs> There's a lot of people in this cemetery. You see, I, I came here for, for some nostalgia. I mean, this was a park when I first came to Waukegan. Uh, you do know we have parks, right? It's such a beautiful day. Uh, perhaps, you'll, perhaps you'll join me to one. We'll, we'll go after this. Um, I came from Sweden. This, yes. this was not original home. Oh, great. I have Swedish friends. It's fantastic. It's been since 1890. So I came when I was about 20 years old. And the city was much different. There was only one or two factories on the lakefront at the time I came. But it was an interesting city. People from all over the world were coming here. In fact, you could walk down one street and hear one language. You'd walk down another and hear a completely different one. The city was changing, it seemed to me, by the day. The more I got adjusted to Waukegan and to America, uh, the more I realized that the city was growing. People were coming here on the promise of jobs, and it seemed every year they'd add a new factory to the lakefront. More jobs and more opportunities for people, and I thought, what a wonderful thing. Now, as I grew up here from my 20s into my 30s, 
I recall something that, that I found is somewhat of a changing life event. I read in the newspaper of this failed vote on a park district, and I didn't much understand it. I didn't understand why it failed, but I also didn't understand what people were doing with this park district. And I got to thinking that perhaps it failed because people like me were new to the country, new to the city, and still adjusting. They weren't concerned with a park district. They were concerned about their families, their job, finding a place here. And so I started to get more interested in the idea of these parks. We had a couple, actually. Not just the cemetery, but we had George's Grove, we had Electric Park, but as the factories grew more numerous on the lake, we realized we needed to protect some green space. We needed to think ahead. And so, I, I, I pardon me, my story grows a little long here, so I'll take you forward. 1916. I'm certain you recall 1916. Probably not for the reasons I'll talk about. 1916 was a year perhaps our last year of innocence. The world was at war, Waukegan was not. But you all know the next few years brought us into the Great War and brought us heartbreak and tragedy among friends and families. But I'm not here to talk about that necessarily. 1916 was a year that all the hard work from civic groups like the Waukegan Chamber of Commerce, uh, something called the Park Day Association, and what I think was the most important work from the women's clubs around the city. Worked so hard to get organized this park district. And there was a man named Lewis Yeoman who did also some hard work circulating a petition around town to ensure that a park district would get on a ballot so that we could put it up to another vote and hopefully this time have some success. I was honored when people approached me to serve on the Park District Board of Commissioners should that vote tend towards the formation of such a district. So the vote was scheduled for the day after Christmas, and it rained, <laughs> which frustrated us. We were concerned the rain might keep people away. It might affect the vote. It might make for yet another failed attempt. We thought this was important work, but the good spirits of the people supporting the Park District. The enthusiasm won the day. And the Park District carried by an overwhelming margin, and that meant that I served as a Park District Board of Commissioner with four other men. Let you in on a little secret? We didn't have much idea what we were doing that first meeting. <laughs> None of us had term limits. We didn't know who was gonna lead this. We appointed temporary presidents, secretaries, and then we had to switch it all around because no one knew how long they would serve. So we finally drew lots to see who would serve and I drew the second to, lo uh, second to last straw. But no matter, we got ourselves together. We started doing the work of the Board of Commissioners. A lot of that work had been done for us. The Powell family had donated land for parks. Uh, Mrs. Upton and the women's clubs around the city gave us this Perkins plan, this wonderful plan to utilize ravines and green space. Our job really was to keep securing more land. So we got people who were good at that. We hired some lawyers <laughs> and we made sure that we could secure land. One of the gems we secured early on, uh, we decided to name after the great conservationist president, Teddy Roosevelt. And that my friends, is my personal favorite part. So my time on the Park District Board of Commissioners expired. I was replaced by good people. The work of that commission still continues and grows to this day. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a first-rate park district here and a first-rate golf course as part of that park district. And so as I grow in my retirement years, I find myself spending more and more time in the parks. So. Why, why not? Let's go. Come on, let's go to the park. <laughs> Thank you. Today, 100 years after its inception, the Waukegan Park District covers 700 acres of land, 40, park dish, 40 parks. There are two golf courses, four recreation centers, a field house, fitness and aquatic center, the Waukegan Park District is also one of the few districts that has a cultural arts department, which oversees an art center, a history museum, and special events, including 
the Oak Ridge Cemetery walk. And we're so glad you came. Yeah. Yes. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Leibich. Thank you all. Mr. Alfred Herndon. Straighten up and fly right. <laughs> Straighten up and stay right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Well, thank you, ma'am, but no, I am not the basketball star in my family. <laughs> my son, Alfred Jr. is. You may have seen his picture in the paper a couple years ago. He was on the YMCA team that took the championship. He now plays for Dr. King's Rexes. Wow. Nice. You know Dr. King! Well, we, I lived on the corner of George Avenue and uh, McAllister Street. Then you know all three of his teams. <laughs> the only one here who does. <laughs> well, this is my sister. She knows. <laughs> okay, okay. The three teams. The Rexes, the Rexettes, and the All Nations. Now, I'll let you in on the secret. The name Rex and Rexettes, his last name was King. He was a surgeon at St. Teresa's. Rex is King. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big brain surgery thing, okay? Oh. Don't be so sure. I was an OR nurse. And there you go. Here, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. King had three teams. The Rexes, which are for the black boys. The Rexettes, duh, for the black girls. And the All Nations, because here in Ward 1 was where the immigrants first came, the Jews, the Lithuanians, the Swedes, the Armenians. His only stipulation for playing on one of his teams was that if you auditioned for, tried out for, tried to get on the team at Waukegan Township and they wouldn't accept you, then come play for him. Mm -hmm. He said that sports builds character. And in addition to sports, Dr. King had a truck farm on the west side up by uh, Webster School. Mm -hmm. And as truck farms go, it was big. It was a quarter mile long, four city blocks wide, and whatever the kids grew, the families ate, which was a good thing during the Depression. He also said that building character and establishing upward mobility comes with knowing famous and wealthy and influential people. And Dr. King, that's how my son got this ball. The Harlem Globetrotters are in Chicago and he took his Rexes and Rexettes down to meet them and he got the ball. We called him uppity. <clears throat> <laughs> Dr. King was <clears throat> high yellow. His mama was from Germany. He was very light skinned and he was a surgeon at St. Teresa's Hospital. So he talked to white folks like he was their equal. But he also came down here to the South Side and talked to the black folks some trash talk. <laughs> Do you know what playing the dozens is? Do you know what signifying is? <laughs> playing the dozens is when you talk about somebody's mama. Your mama's so fat when she sits around the house, she sits around the house. <laughs> Signifying is when they talk about you. You so fat, because you skinny so I can say that. You so fat, and I won't get slapped. You so fat when you sit around the house, you sit around the house. <laughs> Dr. King did it both. And he did it well, he lived. Okay. Okay. Dr. King was a strange little man, and I do mean it. He was five foot eight, he was light skinned, he was a second lieutenant in the war, and he had a killer underhand hook shot from midcourt. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. King hobnobbed with the very rich and the <clears throat> ladies of the evening <laughs> and used his connections for the kids of Waukegan. Dr. King's clinic 
is that white building right there with the door facing us and the kind of like pointing right behind this big tombstone. Mm -hmm. okay? Dr. King had no problems keeping his patients waiting for an hour or more. If he was at a basketball game, if he was at a baseball game, one man died waiting for him. When he got back to the office, his son was just standing there yelling and screaming and jumping up and down. Dr. King said, your daddy was old. He was going to die. There was nothing I could do to stop it. Okay? Dr. King was known on one occasion, actually, they were in competition, the Rexes, and the word nigga came from the audience somewhere. He picked up the team and left. Came on home. I feel the same way. <laughs> I rent a house with my family up on the west side in Frog Island. I work at the asbestos factory down here on the lake. I've made enough money working at the asbestos factory to buy a radio for my family. I'm buried right over there because I worked at the asbestos factory. In my opinion, for all it's worth, Dr. King has done so much for the kids of Waukegan. They should name a park after him. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. Today, Dr. King's legacy is remembered at King Park. Does anybody know where it is? It's uh, South Avenue is that next traffic light. You go to the left and it's right on the southwest corner. Um, they're going to put a new playground in there from what I understand. Um, and that was originally called South Avenue Park and then they named it after him. The Waukegan Park District acquired it in 1970, and then it became King Park in 1971. Today, King Park is 2.7 acres. There's a small baseball diamond, flower beds, and playground equipment. Plans for future include a community garden. That would be very appropriate, wouldn't it? Would it have a garden? Thank you very much. Indeed. Hey, thank thank you. you. Straighten up and fly right. <laughs> As you're walking that away, I'm buried right behind those chairs right there. Say hi to me when you go by. <laughs> and here's Alfred's grave. We're going to get you heard speak. I'd like to introduce to you Harry Gould and Louis Yeoman. Hi, folks. My name is Joseph Herbert Gould. And I want to tell you my story. I came here in 1893 from England and settled in these parts, and I bought me a farm. And my farm was Bonnybrook Farm. And I raised dairy cows. Now, my piece of land was probably the best piece of land you could find out here. It's kind of like this cemetery. Beautiful pasture. I even had a brook that ran through the whole piece of land. I had 240 acres. Well, I bought that piece of land in 1904, and I farmed it until 1924. Well, around 1923, some city slicker from Chicago comes on my land, and he says to me, I might want to buy your farm. And I says, for well, what? He goes, well, I have a business venture, and I want to make a golf course. And I said, okay, I had no idea what a golf course was. <laughs> but I could be rich. So, he says to me, he says, I'd like a little piece of this land so that I could make a hole. And I said to him, I said, the whole damn place is full of holes. <laughs> he goes, no, not that kind of hole. Golf. So he paid me some money and he took a piece of my farm and he started working it, made it nice and smooth and pretty looking. And he comes back to me one day and he says, you know, I don't know if I can buy your farm. And I have pretty sights of being a rich man. 
thought, well, what's the problem? He says, you have 240 acres here, but I need more land than that. Now, my farm on the east bordered Lewis Avenue, and on the west, it bordered Macquarie Road. And on the south, it bordered Sunset. So when he said he needed more land, the only thing I could think of was to send them to my neighbor, Charlie Holdridge. So I did, to see if they could work out a deal. Well, a couple days later, Charlie comes back and he's got a big smile on his face and <laughs> I knew he got an offer he couldn't refuse. <laughs> so I'm thinking the deal must still be on. Well, it ended up that this Benjamin Lowenmeyer, who wanted to build his golf course, came up to me and he says, yes, I do want to buy your land. Now my son, I had a little son, Herbie, who followed this guy around all the time. So Lowenmeyer got a liking for Herbie and we made a deal. I made $78,000 for 240 acres of land in 1924. Well, you know, I told everybody in Waukegan that was getting my milk, I was done, I was retiring, <laughs> and I went to Gray's Lake. <laughs> now my son Herbie stuck with this Lowenmeyer Meyer guy for a little while, and he ran a crew of boys that went out in the pastures and pulled all the rocks so they could smooth out the land. And they paid 20 cents an hour for these kids, and my son Herbie made 25 cents an hour. He was now a foreman. And me? No, I went to Gray's Lake. Well, that's kind of where my story ends. And I want to introduce you to, to Lewis Powell, who was a park commissioner. And he's going to tell you kind of what happened after I left. But I left a happy and a rich man. Look. He's the comedian of the act. <laughs> A little bit more on Lowenmeyer. He was a realtor out of Chicago and a developer. And he had money behind him, and his plan was to make a golf course. And that golf course's name was going to be Bonnie Brook Country Club. And the concept behind it was that if you wanted to play it on the golf course, you had to buy a lot on one of the Bonnie Brook lanes that went around the golf course. And this was all being developed by Mr. Lowenmeyer. And as I said, he had money that was backed all the way from Chicago to the local people here that put up money. Because remember, this was during the Roaring Twenties, and there was a lot of money to be made right then in 1925, 1926. Meyer also went out and he hired an architect. An architect from, uh, actually it was from Scotland, and his name was Jim Freitas. And he had a brother who was also from Scotland, and he was the, the pro down at Wincia in Lake Forest. And Jim had a uh, part in the design of that golf course. And Owen Meyer thought that this was a good idea to bring him up to Waukegan really wasn't Waukegan then, and developed money, which he did. Things were going along fine, and then in February of 1926, Mohenmeyer commits suicide in Chicago. We don't know what happened. We only know that he turned on the gas jets in his kitchen and died. So there was a big question about, well, is this going to go through? Well, it did go through because of the fact that we had all this, all this money and all these arrangements had been made. So in 1927, they had a big open house and they were allowing people to play golf on the golf course in order to get them enticed to buying a lot. Well, that's 1927. They did it again in 28. Well, in 1929, the stock market crashed. And by 1930, all the money men that had their backing wanted out. 
they were in a they were in a pickle. They lost money in the market. There's no jobs. So Park District, of which I was a member of, and I was the president at that time, uh, and it's a the commission is still the same today as it was then, which is five members. And we heard that there was a desire to sell the property and a petition was raised and so we did buy the property but we did not buy the lots around the golf course and that was sold for a hundred thousand dollars in 1931 and I have to tell you this was a big leap of faith in the park district to do this they were only about 14 years old in their own right depression was going on and who was going to play on a public golf course. And incidentally, this was the only public golf course in the whole county. It took a lot of guts to do that and we really don't know how that's going to turn out. Well, this concludes the cemetery walk. We will go to the storytellers and hear what they have to say. Here are some fun facts about the Waukegan Park District. The Waukegan Park District's smallest park is Beasley Park. The largest Waukegan Park, excluding the sports park and Bonnie Brook Golf Course, is Bowling Park. Did you know that we have a four-acre bird sanctuary in the Bonnie Brook subdivision. The statue of the boy in Veterans Memorial Plaza is Orion Powell. He was 12 years old when he became a drummer boy uh, during the Civil War. And Ty, did he also won the Congressional Medal of Honor? Am I right about that? Or what? Yes. At the age of 14, he was wounded during the Battle of Vicksburg. He had been given orders by his commanding officer that while well, they were running out of supplies, needed help. So this order needed to be sent to General Sherman and Orion uh, volunteered to go across the battlefield. And while he was doing this, he was struck in the leg by a musket ball. He was ordered off the field to go to the makeshift hospital, but he refused because he did have his order from his commanding officer. And he did find General Sherman uh, relayed the order, and then uh, afterwards he was uh, given the great distinction of winning the Congressional Medal of Honor for uh, his bravery on the battlefield of Vicksburg in 1863. Thank you. Yes. Maybe I missed this, but was this always a cemetery and a park, or did it change over at some point? Uh, when it was designed, it was to be dual purpose. Okay. When it was originally laid out with the avenues, the roads, uh, there were designated park areas within the cemetery. It was common for folks to come to the cemetery to enjoy their Sunday afternoons or whatever day it may be. Uh, the only area in the park today, or in the cemetery today, that is still parkland was over by where Marion Upton was giving her story, Millionaire's Row. Uh, so Millionaire's Row is kind of in the horseshoe area there and then the open grass there, that's still parkland. They were kind of the movers and shakers of Waukegan. And they bought that area and they kept it open. That's what they wanted. We hope you enjoyed the cemetery walk today. We'll finish you out with a few more stories, a little more history, a few of the parks that weren't mentioned uh, throughout your walk today. Take it away, Brian. All right. So, growing up in Waukegan, I was always really interested by some of the, the parks in Waukegan. Like, where do you get their, where do we get the names from? One of the parks is Armory Park. And so that name comes from the former Illinois National Guard Armory that was at 1600 Glenflora Avenue. Uh, the Armory was built in 1939, and it was used by the U.S. Army until 2010. Uh, guardsmen were mobilized out of that armory uh, and deployments for deployments during World War II and the Korean War. And in 2012, it was purchased by the Park District. Bedrosian Park is named after John Bedrosian, who emigrated from Armenia to the United States when he was five years old, came with his family. His childhood was greatly impacted by the Barwell Settlement. 
which was an institution that operated for the benefit of the underprivileged and immigrant people of this community. John became a leader among his Armenian friends and schoolmates. By age 18, he had formed the Knights of Armenia. John died at the age of 41, and Bedrosian Park was named in his honor. Upon his death, John Bedrosian was eulogized as a man who gave to the community more than he took. Belvedere Park, originally known as McHenry Road, started as a stagecoach road that extended from Waukegan, Illinois, all the way to Belvedere, Illinois. In 1848, uh, the Lake and McHenry Plank Road Association improved that uh, a dirt road by laying three inch thick oak wood planks, 12 to six feet long, um, from Waukegan to Haynesville, just west of where we are today. Uh, this would become the first toll road in the county, but because people could bypass it by going other ways, it didn't succeed as a toll road. <laughs> if it was muddy, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> and so to continue with uh, Belvedere, in Belvedere Park we have uh, Ganster Bull. Uh, Dean Howard E. Ganster uh, served as rector of Christ Church from 1913 to 1946. Uh, Ganster served uh, as Park District Board Commissioner for 32 years, and he or also organized the first Boy Scout troop here in Waukegan and served on the board of Victory Memorial Hospital. Pop quiz for you. <laughs> There's one park in Waukegan that is named not after the person's last name, but their first name. Do we know what it is? Beer. Beer. And I'll tell you what. The city of Waukegan's recreation department started in 1941 and then it merged with the park district in 1970. During that time, the recreation department was acquiring smaller parks throughout the city. But then after it was uh, merged with the park district, well, it was decided to honor the longtime uh, city recreation department director, Beaver Butts. <laughs> cool thing about Beaver, I learned to ride a bike there, so just my own information there. Uh, so for Bowen Park, um, in 1909, so before the Waukegan Park District is formed, um, the, Waukegan, uh, their, the Waukegan Park opening celebration was held in President Bowen Park, um, and it was a three-day affair. It was a large fair that was happening in Bowen Park, and it was used to raise money to purchase the land so it could become a public park. Um, the fair was opened by cannon fire here at the lakefront, and it was shot off by the USS Nashville. While the fair was a success, it did not become a park at that time. It was called the Haynes Farm at that point. Hopefully you, you visited the museum or will on the way when you get back to Bowen Park. That was the Haynes House. Um, Dugdale. The Dugdale family immigrated from Ireland to Little Fort, we call it Waukegan today, and they came in the 1830s. So that makes the Dugdale family one of the earlier settlers to come to this area. The Dugdale Farmstead was located along the south side of Belvedere Road and just west of Lewis Avenue on today's Dugdale Avenue. Fireman's Memorial Park is one of the smaller parks we have in the park district just north of York House here in Waukegan and that was officially dedicated in 1963 to firefighters who gave their lives in the line of duty. There at the park uh, there are markers honoring those including John Hobart Jensen and Lieutenant Franklin Mercer and also New York firefighters that lost their lives during September 11, 2001. In 1996, the Henry Fowle Callahan Disc Golf Course opened. Harold and Joanne Callahan funded the course to honor and remember their son Henry, who was murdered at the age of 23 during a holdup in a restaurant in Colorado. Henry was a graduate of the University of Oregon, where he founded the school's Ultimate Frisbee Club. Henry Callahan was an ambassador for Ultimate Frisbee, helping to encourage others to play. Uh, so for Graham Park, it's named after Otto Graham Jr., who was one of the greatest football players to play in all time. He played, for, he played quarterback for the Cleveland Browns in the All-American Football Conference and then the NFL from 1946 to 1955. He's regarded as one of the most dominant players of that era, and he's now in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So something the Cleveland Browns can actually be proud of. <laughs> the land that is today Hingston Park, where the field house is, an aquatic center, it was willed to the park district by Emily H. Moulton in honor of her father, Eber Hingston. Hingston was an early settler to Little Fort, arriving in 1836. He was a farmer and also served as a Lake County Highway Commissioner and also a school trustee. Joseph Select Park was originally Clark Park and it was dedicated originally to John S. Clark, a longtime superintendent of the Waukegan Public Schools. 
um, the park was rededicated in 1997 to honor Joe Sisolak for his influences on the youth in Waukegan, mm. teaching them to golf. And Joe also uh, hit a hole in one at Bonnybrook Golf Course, one of the 400 mm. yard holes, with one of those small wooden golf clubs. Mm. And we have it at the museum. Not on display yet, but we have it at the museum. <laughs> Francis Rudd, an immigrant from England, purchased 140 acres of woodland that also had two houses on it, including a log cabin, and he bought this at $19 an acre. The land was gradually cleared of the trees for farming, and the Red Farm was passed down from generation to generation for the next 130 years. Minnie and Clarence Smith deeded in their property known as uh, Smith Park to the Waukegan Park District in 1919. Uh, Clarence was a real estate insurance agent and president of the People's Bank of Waukegan. The community rec center opened in 1976 as a facility for the YMCA. Today it's operated by the Boys and Girls Club of Lake County, which is just right past the church over there. You met Marion Upton today, and there is of course Upton Park on Sheridan Road or Genesee Street, whichever road you're coming from. But there is a beautiful house that is in Upton Park. That building today is used by the Waukegan Park District Special Recreation Services of Northern Lake County. We call it today the Douglas House. Robert Douglas built the home in 1853 in the style of a Gothic cottage that he had remembered from his childhood growing up in England. Douglas was an internationally known authority on forestry. He specialized in introducing certain evergreen species in the United States with a heavy concentration of plantings in the Waukegan and surrounding area. If you're familiar with the Stanford mascot, the tree, that's a Douglas tree. You've heard of Douglas firs. But they're not actually Douglas right. firs. Well. <laughs> but it gets confusing. Woodard Park is named in honor of Robert Woodard. He was commissioner of the park district from 1971 to 1981. Uh, the park is on a for the former site of Jackson School, which opened in 1921 and closed in 1976. And our last one, Victory Park. Victory Memorial Hospital. Today, we call it Vista East. On the corner of Glenflora Avenue and Sheridan Road, it opened in 1933. The original name of the hospital, as well as the grounds, Victory Park, were named in recognition of the end of World War I in 1918. Well. That is it. <laughs> You've learned it all. Yeah. We'll Actually, we left out a lot. The GAR, Grand Army of the Republic, Post 374, they purchased these two lots for the burial of their members. So these are all Civil War. And as you can see, they're made out of limestone. And the limestone is just wearing away. All I had on him was that he was a gardener. But look at that beautiful monument. Beautiful uh, Wells, that's his name, Mr. Wells. Henry Wells. And he, I could find him and he was a gardener. Maybe he is related somehow to the Larsons because they are buried right over there. Yeah. Um, some of the materials of the, um, of the markers are marble, granite. But we have an unusual one here. We have zinc. And you see that green one that looks right straight through there? It's a green mm -hmm. as we get this way. That is made out of zinc. And the late 1800s, about 1870, they started making them. It's actually molded, sandblasted, and it is hollow inside. You knock on it, it is hollow. And yet those markers from that time period are like new. They mm -hmm. are not worn at all. This one here is red granite. Mr. Barstow had a monument company uh, in Waukegan on South Genesee Street. It is the one who is responsible for most of the red granite markers in Oakwood.
Uh, we hope you enjoyed today. Thank you for joining us for the 23rd Annual Cemetery Walk. See you next year. For number 24.